And we are welcome, welcome, Facebook family, YouTube family, everybody family. We welcome you and we love you. Uh, we ask God to bless you. The message from last week continues today. Last week, we talked about the body, the mind, and the spirit. These days, everywhere you go, people are talking body, mind, and spirit. <coughs> But we use the scripture to show you that this is not something new. It's been in the Bible all along. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you, entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul is praying. He's praying for the saints. And this is a man of God, a man who was seen in the Lord face to face. And his prayer is that your spirit, your soul, and body be preserved. God wants these three complete and whole. So the world has it upside down. The world has body, mind, and spirit. But that's not how God works. It's spirit. That's how you see in the first Thessalonians, Paul says, spirit, soul, and body. We live in a world that is upside down of what's happening in heaven. When I stood up to preach, uh, the Lord told me just to say that, so you know you cannot follow the order of the world. He told me, look at your Bible. Okay, this is my Bible. Okay. It's a beautiful, nice Bible. It says, God created you to do amazing things. This is how the Bible is. Hallelujah. You see that? You see the writing on it? But then I pick it to open it to read it for you. And when I open it, if I follow how the cover looks like, my, I find my Bible is upside down. I say, whoa. And so I want to teach you the things of this world are upside down. So I had to turn around my Bible. If I don't change that, it really looks funny because the cover is upside down. And so uh, the Lord, wants you to know about your spirit and he wants you to take care of your spirit first. As human beings, we spend so much time taking care of this flesh. We spend so much time taking care of our external needs, my clothes, my lotion, the makeup, I need to do my hair. And those things are very good. But he says the first thing first, which is take care of your spirit first. Even if you don't look outside, if you don't look good, but the inside is good. God wants you to do that because when it's good on the inside, it's gonna cause the outside look good. I gave you an example of our grandpa passed away last week. 
that during the last hours his body is beaten is really tense you can see that he was fighting but the moment he died because he went to heaven his body looks beautiful he is he has a smile on his face why because the spirit is in a good place so make sure that you take care first of the inside to fulfill the word of god seek you first <clears throat> the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will follow you. The Bible tells us that we should not let the body rule over the soul. Don't let your body rule over the soul. Every time you want to eat, it doesn't mean go eat. Every time you want to buy something, it doesn't mean go buy it. In America, this is really hard, and that's why Christians have a hard time becoming like Jesus in America because you have too much freedom, you have too much money, you have your own car. You can do what you want. You can live with nobody's help. It's not like that in Africa. You depend upon other people to live. You are all connected together. So train your body to not rule over your soul. With this, it is very good that you know God wants you to fast. Put the body to uh, discipline and not allow the body to do whatever it wants. So the order is do not let the body rule over the soul and do not let the soul rule over the spirit, but let the spirit rule over everything. Because the spirit that in you, if you let that spirit shine, it, it's the divine in you and it's not corrupted. But you have to bring it to the surface. You have to uh, grow your soul. You have to make it like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and everything will follow you. Amen. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5, the Bible tells us to live by the Spirit. Do you have a Bible that tells you that you live by the flesh? Somebody step on you and you get angry at them and you slam the door and you throw stuff. When people do bad things to you, take time to pray to consult the word of God and respond after that. So in Galatians chapter 5, 25, it tells you to live by the Spirit. If we live Galatians 5, 25, if we live by the Spirit, let us also Work by the Spirit. In other words, let the Spirit be the source of your life. Let the Spirit direct every aspect of our lives. 
Amen. Amen. Now that you know about body, mind, and spirit, we are going to talk about how you can make your spirit live and strong, dominant, and lead. <coughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that we do in the flesh, we cannot please God. God is a spirit, and those who seek him, they must seek him in spirit. They must worship him in the spirit. Then how do we connect to the spirit? How do we get to the divine? First of all, get into the word of God. Hallelujah. Read the word of God. Listen to the word of God as it is being preached. Listen as it is being read. Read it out loud. Read it silently. Meditate upon it. You are strong physically because you take proteins. You feed yourself for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. To take care of this flesh. But what do you feed your spirit? You feed your spirit by number one, the word of God. The word of God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4. 12. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both John's and Mero, and able to judge the thoughts and the intention of the heart. The Lord gave me a revelation of the word of God this week. So the word of God is a life. That means whatever the word of God is preached, people are going to have a life. If you pay attention to the word of God, sickness is going to go. Depression is going to go. When you pay attention to the word of God, miracles, signs, and wonders will happen. I will stand before you right now. I am a miracle of the word of God. This week I was very sick. Very sick. In fact, there are people I was supposed to call and I couldn't call them. They know I was sick. And now if they watch, they know it's a miracle I'm talking. I had a cough uh, really bad, really bad. And I couldn't talk two minutes, three minutes without coughing. And then the Lord gave me a revelation of the word of God. And he said, the word of God is alive. Because it's alive. Okay, please take care of the kids. Hallelujah, we cannot preach when it's loud like that. So because the word of God is living, it means it brings a life. It creates. There is nothing you speak the word of God. It creates. It creates. So, how come you quote the scripture? And it still has no effect. How come you read it and you are still not seeing a miracle? The Lord spoke to me. He said, when you read the word of God, for the word to work, you need to pay attention. And the Lord spoke to me. I shared this message with the team on Friday. We are living in the days 
where there is a destruction everywhere. The preachers stand up to preach, and then we go on a phone and we begin to check the news. I have done it. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. I repented. The preacher begin to share the word, and we go on the phone, and we begin to play the games. Ooh, forgive us, Lord. Hallelujah. Each one of you, as this word is being preached, if you have done something like that, just repent. You read the word of God. The moment you read, uh, you say, oh, you know what? Let me check my social media. Let me see how many likes. <laughs> Let me see how many people have viewed my story. How many people have viewed my story? Okay, upstairs. Okay, now, uh, the word of God you begin to read, and then uh, you say, well, let me uh, just have my phone next to me and then it becomes a distraction. Then it doesn't work. But actually, the word of God, if you reverence it and you read it for what it is and you bring yourself together and pray for God to help you to get into it, it is a life. It means what it means. If the Bible says by his stripe I'm healed, then I am going to use the word of God. It will hear me. If the Bible says the word of God creates, then I'm going to use the word of God to create. As I told you, I was very sick. But this morning, I used the word of God for me. And the Lord said, use it against the devil. And I took it. I walk the devil. I, I hit him really hard to enter the sword and the devil ran away and my throat was lost and the Lord healed me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Whatever you are going through, just take the word. But in order to take the word, take time to pray in the spirit first. Prepare the atmosphere, then repent. And then you take the word of God with a strong voice, command the enemy to leave whatever area he is oppressing you in. Amen? Amen. So the word of God is living, is sharper than any two edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of a soul and spirit. Last time I told you that the body and the soul, they are best friends. They go to sleep together. They do things together. But one more connection and that is there also is the soul and spirit. However, they need to separate because the spirit must lead, not be influenced by anything else. So when you read the word of God, it will bring a discernment to know that which is of God and that which is of the devil. People look on the outside. We are living in the days, we tell people, oh, if you have the bread, you're going to go to hear we are living in the days where people are saying, if you don't wear long dress or long skirt, you are not going to go to heaven. But when you take the word of God and use it, you will know that is not true. So the word of God always shines the light and it divides soul and spirit. It divides even soul and body. So that you will know the truth. There was one time we were ready to do the difference for a woman. And when we began to do the difference, the power of God was there, the fire of God was there. I had about two or three pastors with me. We're gonna do the difference. But no matter what we did, it did not work. Why? 
Because the woman we start doing the deliverance on as we talked, she began to just be distracted, you know. You know, you know when people do this. And there's nothing wrong to touch yourself about. Uh, during the deliverance, uh, she started twitching. And she started doing so that she's not dead. She's not dead. Uh, the spirit is not in it. So the Lord spoke to us, hallelujah, that there has to be a focus in order to benefit. So one of the messages that came in Wednesday, remember to focus and do everything at the proper time because of because of Ecclesiastes, is that what it is? Chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. Uh, verse 2 says, uh, verse 1, there is appointed time for everything. And there is a time for every event under heaven. A time to give a birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. There is a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. So when you uh, want to follow God, when you want uh, the spirit to work, when you want the word of God to work, when you want heaven to intervene for you, always do things at the right time. Hallelujah. Always. Choose what is your treasure and focus on that. And the Bible tells us that wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So when you go to worship on Sunday, you leave your house, you put everything aside, because worship, being with God, that's what is important to you. So when you go focus on that, do that. But if you try to do other things, you know, everything is not in order. It's upside down and you will not benefit. In the same way that you can't take the time to drive and use it to read the newspaper, which some of us have done, forgive me, Lord. If you drive and you read the newspaper, you can be involved in an accident. So the time to drive is the time to drive. And the time to read the newspaper is the time to read the newspaper. Amen. So make sure that you are doing things at the proper time and you're putting God the first because then things will go according to the order of heaven. It's possible for the power of God to be present, to change everything. But no miracle can happen if you are not in the order. You have to be in a position to receive your miracle and you have to have everything in order and then God will move. There is always my part, your part, and then God will move. Okay. Hallelujah. So you can go ahead and finish Ecclesiastes chapter 3 when it talks to us about the timing for everything. But if we go back to the... Um, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 uh, we will finish our scripture in verse 12 which is, says that the word of God is piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit 
of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intention of the heart. Even if they take you, they put you on an island where you have nothing but you have the word of God, you will live because man doesn't live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the heart of, uh, uh, every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Please note the last sentence here, which it says that the word of God is able to judge the thoughts. Woo! Oh, the word of God is able to judge the thoughts. And the intention of the heart, the Lord spoke us to, to ask this week and he said, make sure that the intention of your heart is good. When you give your tithes and offering, please, it's not for you to see the soul, to sow the seed so you can reap. You are doing it because God's house is your house, isn't it? God's kingdom is our kingdom. We are prospering our own, you know, inheritance. We are home. You are not giving because the pastor is going to, uh, look at you uh, with much, you know, uh, favor because you gave him more. You are uh, worshiping not because you want the pastor to like you, but you are doing it for the good motive. So always God warned me this past week, tell my people, tell my people, oh, shikabakasha, to do everything from the good heart. From the good heart. There is a woman who was caught up to heaven. And all her life, she was very poor. And she lived just helping the pastor, helping the elders, helping the church members. She would go to the house, do the housework. But when she gets to heaven, among the thousand of works, there were only three works that she could claim. And she said, Lord, why? And the Lord said, you know the answer yourself. And she began to say, she was very poor. Every time she went to help, it was so that they give her a daughter, two daughters. And there is nothing wrong working. But make sure when you are doing a charity, you are doing it for the glory of God. You say, I hear you, Pastor, but what does this scripture have to say with you telling us how do you grow your spirit? How can you develop your spirit so that it's close to God? Remember I told you, when you read the word of God, oh, it's very hard for me to preach this, but God wants you to know this is not a history book that you're reading. This is not a novel. Oh, when I, when the Lord showed me this, it changed my life. I have been reading the Bible. I believe it's the word of God. But this week, the Lord gave a new meaning to it. When you are reading this and you pay attention and you focus, it's a life. You will start even drawing closer to the Lord. You will start even uh, seeing when you read this, knowing that this is a living word of God. It will make a difference when you know that it's like kissing Jesus. When you read the word, it's like spending intimate time with Jesus. So this is not a regular book that you're reading. You are reading God himself. And so to grow your spirit, to connect in the spirit, read the word of God and have a revelation that it's living and it's active. It's powerful for you to use. Did you know that when you go pray for the sick and you practice the word of God and you take the word believing it's alive, you can use that as a sword to uproot sickness, to uproot disease, to drive out demons, just using the word of God. From today forward, when you 
When you pray for people, use the word of God more than ever before. So the word they tell us in John chapter 6, my word is what? Spirit and life. My word is spirit and life. So when you read, you get in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Okay, I will tell you another way, then we'll close. But there are many ways. So I'm going to write an article. We can even continue this message next week. Another way to get in the spirit is praying in tongues. Woo! Praying in tongues. It's not witchcraft. It's not craziness. It's not foolishness. But when you pray in the spirit, you are connecting with the divine in you. God has created every human being and even those who are not saved, there is a divine DNA in them. How do you tell a little kid that there are angels around the corner and the kid would say, yeah, yeah, I know. You tell them, God is in heaven watching over us. And they say, okay, mama, I believe. It's because what you're telling them is the spirit is divine. It's connecting with the divine in them. So when you are praying in the spirit, you are doing an activation. Hallelujah. You are connecting with God in you. And this is how people start going to heaven. This is how people start seeing. This is it. You go in the spirit and you see. In the book of Revelation chapter 1, the apostle John tells us, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And this is what I saw. He saw when he was in the spirit. And he wrote a great mighty revelation, which is very powerful and which tells us what's going to happen in the future. So pray in the spirit and do not forbid Speaking in tongues. That's what the Bible tells us. This week, another time, also another day, I was really sick. And I met with my team. When it was time to pray, I told the Lord, uh, I'm not going to pray out loud. I will lay down. I have said this maybe a hundred times when I come down, I really don't feel like it. But the Holy Spirit is always here. And as a prayer warrior are praying, we get empowered. All of a sudden, I feel the nourish to pray in the spirit. I was surprised I did it. And the whole time over an hour, I prayed. Now once did I feel sickness, the sickness left me. Sickness left me the whole hour. My nose did not run. I did not cough. I did not sneeze. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What happened? The Lord spoke to me. He said, because the spirit cannot be sick. When the spirit is roaring, running over you, when the spirit is taking the lead, uh, the body goes wherever the spirit goes. And so, after the prayer, I was quite amazed. And when I get back in my room, I got sick again. But the Lord used it to teach me this message I'm bringing it to you. Amen. Hallelujah. So please know that you have a power. You have the spirit of God in you. And he wants you to live more in the spirit than you live in the flesh. 
When people are in the flesh, they are angry. When the people are in the flesh, they argue. When the people are in the flesh, they don't humble themselves. And so on and so on. The days that are coming, we are going to see amazing things. There are days coming when we're going to see demons walking in the flesh like with our eyes. It's happening in Rwanda. In Rwanda, we are seeing uh, snakes. You know, that there are kids in the school, they change themselves in the snakes. Isn't that right? Didn't you hear about it? I have a witness here. I saw it. Do you remember that in Mosanza, one kid changed into a snake? And in Rwanda also, there was an animal that was coming and asking women to have a relationship, sex with the animal. So when it is a thing start, because that's happening over there because evil is welcomed by the government. The government has given the whole country to the devil. But what is going to happen when it happens here to United States? You need more power. You need to be in the spirit to deal with the devil. You can't take a knife. You cannot take a gun and shoot the devil. You want to use the gun in the spirit, which is the power of God. Hallelujah. So God is preparing us for the power that we are going to need to use very soon. There are rumors of things that they are planning to do. How are we going to cope? Are you, are you going to let people come and pin you to the ground and give you a, a vaccine? What are you guys, your plans? Because they are planning to do, uh, to force people. I'm gonna use my gun in the spirit. And I know I'm gonna win. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I think I gave you too much information, but <coughs> hopefully it has helped somebody. Today we focus more on talking about being in the spirit. Let's stand, let's say pray. Hallelujah, the Lord wants me to pray. people who are suffering. He says, bring me your pain. Bring me your sufferings. Bring me everything that you are going through. Hallelujah, Lord, I ask you, as your people are bringing everything to you. He said, bring everything. He says, bring even your sin. Can you imagine that God let us bring the sin to him? There is nobody whatsoever that will allow you to bring them your sin. But God said, tell them to bring their own sins. And the Lord receives everything that you bring. And by his word, he says, you shall live. You shall live. So I command bleeding to live your heart. God, hear the wounds upon the hearts of your bride. God, hear the wounds 
in their minds, in their flesh, in their soul. The Lord wants you also to bring your sickness and your disease. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you paid the price. And by your word, which says, by his stripes, we are healed by the word of God. By the word of God, live. By the word of God, be free. By the word of God, hallelujah, be set free from every oppression. Depression you live by the word of God. Oppression you live by the word of God. All sorts of pain in your stomach, in your body, in your head. Anything that's not life but rottenness in you, in the name of Jesus, by the word of God, I command it to live. The Son of God is against you, Satan. The Word of God is against you and wipes you out. Disease, pain in our body. I keep seeing the stomach. Oh, the, the digestive system. The Word of God is against you in the name of Jesus. You live. I command every demon, every power of sickness and disease. The spirit of infirmity, I command you, live in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, let's get in the spirit. Get in the spirit, people of God. Get in the spirit. Pray in the spirit and live and live. Get in the spirit. Get in the spirit and stay there and stay there. Like an airplane that takes off. Once it gets in the atmosphere, it doesn't struggle anymore. It floats, it flies, no problem. So get in the spirit and receive the ability to stay in the spirit. Hallelujah. Those who need that miracle in the name of Jesus, by the word of God, receive your miracle and stay in the spirit. Keep your miracle in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we give glory to God for his spirit to touch you and to heal you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend, keep that miracle. Stay right there like that airplane that is flying in the middle of the clouds. Stay there, steady, peaceful, no sickness, no disease, in Jesus' holy, holy name. Amen. Amen.